Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain. Right, hopefully this will be the successful video. I have tried to record this about four times so far and I keep fluffing it. Right, um, I've noticed what I consider to be a bug in the Align tool. And so I'm going to demonstrate this and a way around it. I have reported the issue to Silhouette America, so hopefully if it's a bug they will uh, do something about it. For example, if I wanted to have some shapes and I wanted them to align horizontally so that the equal distance apart I would go to space horizontally and it would move them. All right, I'm going to undo that now. If I put a box around them and select all and go to space horizontally it doesn't do what you expect it to do. I don't expect it to do that. And sometimes it puts them to the right, sometimes to the left, and sometimes it mixes them between the two. But it doesn't work as we are expecting it to work. That's the general conclusion I have. So the way around this is to take some guidelines and to decide where you want your last shape to end. Uh, for example, I might want the shapes to go between these two lines here. Then take the box out of the way and move your objects to the guideline. You can have snap to guide on and if you do that they will automatically sort of jiggle over in that direction. Then you can do that and then you can space horizontally and uh, then of course you can put your box around and move it to wherever you so wish. So that's the way round it. Okay, that's that. Um, a quick word because this is the very newest release of the Studio software, version 3.1.143 I think it is. And it does have a new feature. This little button here brings up the Pix scan box. Now, pick scan can only be used if you have a pick scan mat to put your things on. The objective of pick scan is to allow you to put an item, I don't know, maybe it's a child's drawing or a piece of artwork you've done yourself, to put it on a special mat, to take a photograph of it, import that photograph into the software, and then to add your cut line so you can cut it out. That's what it's designed to do. Also, if you've got remnants of uh, paper, card or fabric left over, which are peculiar shapes, you can take a photograph of those while they're on the mat, and then you can add your cut lines to cut shapes out of those and use the nesting feature to get as much use out of your material as humanly possible. Great idea in theory, but in Europe there are no pick scan mats available yet. I have no idea where I will be able to get one and no idea when I will be able to get one. Hmm, not so clever. But for those who are slightly luckier, and that probably means those who are stateside, here is what happens. You have this window open and it's got import from file, import from scanner. I'm ignoring the import from scanner function. My scanner does not get recognized by this software regardless. I can't scan it into the program directly with my scanner at all. It's an HP scanner um, and yeah, the studio software doesn't recognize it's got a scanner. It's funny, it recognizes it prints, but it doesn't recognize it scan. Okay, so what you would do is click on your import from file and you get a box up that says import pic scan image from file. So if you've already got your camera set up, that's one you'd be using. But it's got another box underneath, camera calibration. And to make sure you get the best result from your pic scan mat, I would recommend that you do use the camera calibration. So if you click on this one, you get a show calibration test card. And if you click on that, the test card opens up and it's literally a page covered in dots. You send that to your printer via the normal means, just click on the printer button. Make sure your printer is at 100% that you haven't got any uh, edges or anything, any uh, margins set on it. And you just print it off. 
You then take this piece of paper and you put it on a flat surface and you take a photograph of it head on. Now, in the video that I've seen, um, what somebody does is put it on a desk and takes a picture of it. Now, I tried that with my camera and I was having terrible difficulty. I mean, I live in southern Spain and I've got a bright room and I was still getting shadows on it. It was coming up, the picture wasn't acceptable. I tried doing it with my iPhone and then I swapped over to my normal camera, which is uh, a Panasonic f 35 so it's a decent camera. I was still getting problems and I found that the easiest way to do it was to use blue tack, put a piece of paper or card on the back of a door, which was nice and flat, and put it at eye level. And I find it a lot easier to take a flat on photograph at eye level because you don't want it skewed any more than is absolutely necessary. So you take your photograph of this and then you import it by clicking on the plus button and then it loads your photograph and it whirs away to itself for a minute or so, does all its background checks and it says this is acceptable or this isn't acceptable. If it comes up with that the image is not acceptable, it gives you a little guideline in picture format of what the problem might be. And then you can retake your photograph and you can reload it. Okay, once you've done that, you take whatever image you want to cut out and you put it on your pic scan mat that you have. And you put it on there, you take a photograph of it in a similar manner, and then you load the photograph up by using the import pic scan image from file. You open it up, you choose it, and it brings the image in and it lines it up with your mat. And you then get a view of the mat and your image on it and you can choose your cut lines, you can trace or you can move little items onto pieces of paper that you've put on it, whatever you want to do. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.